Michigan High School Football Coaches Association All-Star Contest is a player's game, yet the dedication of coaches statewide continually shines each August in Spartan Stadium. Large efforts from standout performers have accented this game in years past. Current Michigan Wolverine Heisman Trophy candidate Tyrone Wheatley used his blazing speed to hit the end zone to aid the East Coast two years ago. Quarterbacks have found the spotlight also. Case in point, Dave Reversma on target with a touchdown bullseye to aid a recent West win. Michigan's outgoing high school gridiron talent coming in to your living rooms with a facial. The East-West game straight ahead on Passport. on the campus of Michigan State University, Passports presents the 13th annual East-West High School All-Star Football Game. These high schoolers putting on their pads for the last time before many will begin a collegiate career. Hi, everybody. I'm Larry Osterman along with Michael Rakey. We appreciate you joining us for this afternoon's telecast. This is the 13th annual game matching the East and the West. It's dead even at 6-6, six and six, and Michael, for the most part, these have been highly contested, very closely played game. Yeah, Larry, you're absolutely right. Defensively contested to the extreme. A lot of low-scoring contests, but the West has a leg up now. I know it's 6-6 six and six overall, but the West has won the last two in a row. East won two in succession before that, so uh, one gets a feeling that the East would like to turn this around and get back in the win column here in 93. Well, when you talk about football, you talk about quarterbacks if you want to win, and East wants to win today, and they've got a dandy of a quarterback. Outstanding quarterback. You talk about quarterbacking bloodlines. Tim Youngblood out of Utica, Utica Eisenhower comes from one. His uh, brother Joe is a record-setting quarterback up at Central Michigan. He led his ball club last year to just uh, one loss, 11-1, and one, and that came in the state championship game against Central Cal. Catholic. A lot of presence, very good feet, kid can throw the football, expect the East to do that today with Youngblood. And of course, defensively, they've got a very fine player by the name of Carl Reeves. Outstanding linebacker. He's one of those guys that'll come at you, that search and destroy mentality. He's about 215 pounds. He's out of Oxford High. He's headed to play with Gary Moeller at the University of Michigan. Extremely tough, physical, dominating football player at that linebacking spot. Well, we talked about passing. You've got to have passing. You also have to have a running game and I'm telling you, the West has got that, and they've got a great tailback playing. Larry, put an exclamation point behind what you just said. Randy Kinder, he broke all kinds of hearts here in mid-Michigan in East Lansing. Out of East Lansing High, he's going to play his college football for Lou Holtz at Notre Dame. Kid is a real deal. He's an All-American, USA Today choice. Uh, certainly the very best athlete last year in the state of Michigan. Uh, you will see him explode today, just as he's done in his high school career at East Lansing. We talk a lot about uh, the offensive play. But defensive play comes into being all the way through this whole series. You talked about how tightly these have been played before. West has some good defensive players, including a fellow by the name of Raleigh Ferris. Yeah, and head coach Keith Fralick is very excited about Ferris. 6'4", 270 pounds. He's going to Central Michigan. He plays in the middle at that nose tackle spot, extremely active. And what Fralick is hoping is that it takes a couple of, uh, of West East offensive linemen to occupy him so that he can free up some of the other talents on this West defensive side. Watch for the defense today. I think it's going to be outstanding, both sides. Well, we have been blessed with outstanding weather. We've got some fine athletes. We're going to have a fine ball game. We invite you to stay with us. We'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment on Passport. Larry Osterman and Michael Regai speaking to you from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. It's the 13th edition of the East-West Michigan High School All-Star Football Game. The West won the toss of the coin, elected to defer, 
the East team will receive. Adam Williams will be kicking off for the West, and the deep men for the East are Derek Mason, who wears number eight. He's on the far side of the field. And Akia Dexter, who wears number seven, he's on the near side. Both stand at the five-yard line. So we're about ready to go. This series is tied at six victories each. Last year's game was won by the West by a score of 20 to nothing, a rare lopsided decision. The opening kickoff, a high wobbly kick coming to the near sideline, fielded there, brought up by Tim Stroke to about the 18-yard line, and he is decked there. So the East will begin operations inside its own 20-yard line. They have spotted a forward progress to the 19. Here's the offensive line for the East. Greg James, Brad Off, Coulter, Jason Couch, Bill Kozman, and Chris Lewinsky are up front. The backs and the receivers, of course, the quarterback that Michael talked about, Tim Young, Bud, Estrach, Killert, Barnett, Mason, and Kerr round out that group. Tim Youngblood is 5'9", 160 from Washington Eisenhower. An outstanding quarterback yelling up and down the line of scrimmage. He's got a flanker wide to the right and a split left end. Quick pass over the middle was intended for his left end, Derek Mason, but it fell incomplete. It was a little bit behind him. That's one of the things we'll probably see. Timing plays just won't work like they usually do during the course of the regular season. Exactly, Larry, for all the reasons we've already begun to speak about and will develop through the contest. Let's take a look at this West defensive front for uh, head coach uh, Keith Fralick out of Okemos, Travis Allen, along with Raleigh Ferris, a big 270-pounder, and Lamanzer Williams up front. That linebacking core, a good one. Keep an eye on uh, Andy Staten and Charlie Bush. Also, Brian Zapancic and Jason Sandusky. Love Monroe Klein and DeMarcio Hill, the four in the secondary. Youngblood, back to throw, throws downfield, and is caught by Al Barnett near the 30-yard line. He has spun around and dropped there, maybe just a shade short of the 30. But it will be enough, I believe, for a first down. Well, let's take a look at Joe Youngblood here. Good play action. Now watch. He locks down on Al Barnett on that crossing route. Well, Barnett's a big one. 6'5", about 245 pounds. A young man that played his high school football at Belleville for Bob LaPointe. He's going to Bowling Green to play for that very successful program that Gary Blackney has going on. Youngblood, uh, as we mentioned, Larry, the younger brother of Joe Youngblood, who's been so successful quarterbacking Herb Duramity's Central Michigan program in 1992. They made the first down by about a half yard. Come to the line of scrimmage with a first down. Jim Kerr is flanked wide to the right. Split left in. Derek Mason. Toss into the flat. Caught by Kerr. Down the sideline. 45-50. 45-40. Drilled out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. They say he stepped out of bounds just short of the 40. Shoved out of bounds by Kyle Klein. The outstanding defensive back from Frankfurt. A 29-yard gallop by Jim Kerr following the reception, and it's a big gainer and a first down. Yeah, it just looks like a uh, quick hitch that's supposed to get you maybe about five to six yards, but Jim Kerr, watch here. Now look at the move here. Good spin to the outside, and he left, of course, uh, the DB over on that corner, Clarence Love, in his wake, and then burned it up the sideline before he got a pop over there from uh, Kyle Klein. Big play by Kerr. It's been a passing game so far, not unexpected. Youngblood back to throw again, throws it a mile high, lobs it downfield for Derek Mason, cannot hold it, it's out of bounds. Back defending against the pass was DeMarchio Hill. So it's incompleted forward pass, it'll bring up second down and 10, just short of the 40-yard line in West Territory. No, it's funny, Larry, East head coach Ivy Lofton, the 40-year veteran of high school football coaching here in the state of Michigan, said, we're going to throw the football a lot before this contest began, and so far, that's all we have seen. Nothing yet on the ground. Uh, Tim Stroke, that number 30 you see in white for the East, an exceptional uh, talent at that tailback spot. There's Ivy Lofton. 40 years. He started at Old Eastern High School in Detroit back in 1950, and, of course, he's seen this game progress as uh, the players have gotten uh, certainly more athletic, bigger, and stronger. Big mark off against the, uh, the West coming up here. Going to take the football down uh, to the 25-yard line. The personal foul, a 15-yard penalty, moves the ball to the 25-yard line, just short of the 25. Here are the officials today. Kay Melvin is the referee. Mark Gulnick, Terry Wakeley, Mike Schmidt, Bill Root, and Dave Lovely round out the officiating crew. Tim Stroke is slot to the left now as they set this 
Wing to the right, split left end in the slot left. He's throwing downfield. It is incomplete. Intended for Derek Mason near the five-yard line, and Demarcio Hill again was there defending against the pass. I tell you, now that's a very, very solid athletic battle as you take a look at Joe, Tim Youngblood. He's going to loft this thing up. That's that fade route to the corner. And take a look, Mason and Demarcio Hill, two guys that uh, certainly have uh, exploited their athletic talents as seniors and throughout their high school career. Mason had an opportunity to catch that football. Demarcio Hill out of Reese Puffer up in Muskegon just got a chance to grab a piece of Mason and knock it down. They flip flop the wide receiver and split end now. Youngblood throwing downfield. It's caught at about the eight yard line. This time it was Derek Mason on the receiving end, hit immediately by Clarence Love. It'll be about an eight yard gain on the play. It's near the 17 yard line. It'll be third down in approximately two yards. Tim Youngblood certainly showing off his passing skills. Excellent route run there by Derek Mason. Mason came back to the football out of Mumford High School. Robert Lynch is head coach. So Youngblood certainly on target in this first drive for the East as uh, he's getting a chance to throw the football for Ivy Lofton's ball club. Left end is tight this time. First time we've seen this set. Kerr is split to the right. They've got a slot to the right. Pitch going to stroke. Cuts up field across the 15 down to around the 12 yard line. Got the first down, Aaron Kukla made the capture for the West team. But this has been a very impressive drive with the aid of the 15-yard penalty. No question. This is your basic toss sweep now. Look at some of the kickout blocks that Tip Stroke is going to get here. Got an excellent block uh, in the middle from a big number of 50, Greg James, that 6'5", 250-pounder. Again, here's Stroke. Keep an eye on this young man all day long. Blazing speed. He is a 200-meter uh, uh, hurdles champion here in the uh, state of Michigan. 13-6, and that is speed that uh, has surprised everybody on the college recruiting side. He's going to play his college football for Yale, for the Bulldogs. It's a first down for the Eastern squad. They've been moving relentlessly downfield. Youngblood back to throw, throws into the flat. It is caught by Barnett, and he shoves forward across the five. Many have gotten inside the five-yard line. Well, Fine wrapped him up there along with a couple of other Westerners, but a pretty good gain again as the East continues to move quickly downfield. This young man averaged better than 20 yards per catch in 1992. He's a two-way standout at Bellevue, and again, the West defensively is going to have to maybe get a little bit more active for those linebackers and secondary people. Al Barnett doing a lot of damage. We saw him catch that drag route a moment ago in this drive. That time he just Swings out about five yards off his tight end spot. The right settles down. Youngblood delivers the football. Very smart drive in this first possession out of Tim Youngblood in the east. Second down. Youngblood back to throw. Completes the stroke. Touchdown east. Looks like those guys have been playing together all year. As Youngblood hits stroke right on the numbers. And he carries it in. And the east takes the early advantage. Larry, something that you mentioned right there, uh, certainly it cannot be understated. For a young man that only had 11 practices together for about a course of the week, it's a very crisp drive coming out of the blocks. Look at our play action again. Youngblood doesn't have to wait a long time to get something happening out there on the flat. Tim Stroke gets that touchdown pass from about three yards away. Nate DeLong will attempt the conversion. It's up. It's through. And it's 7 to nothing East. We have 8 minutes and 40 seconds left in the opening period. The Eastern team has taken the opening kickoff and has moved about 81 yards to pay dirt and lead it 7 to nothing. We'll be back on Passports. The 1993 Michigan High School All-Star Football Game is being brought to you by 
Oldsmobile, who invites you to stop by your Oldsmobile dealer soon for a test drive. By Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Chevy Trucks. Over the years, Chevys are the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. We're back at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. East 7, West nothing. 8.40 left in the opening period. The East will now be kicking off. It'll be Nate DeLong who added the point after to be doing the kicking for the East. Ryan Eccles and Sineke Moody are the deep men. Moody standing on the near side wearing number 19. And Eccles on the far side standing at the hash mark. He wears number 9. There are the deep men anticipating the kickoff from Nate DeLong. Long, quite a kicker. He has a 52-yard field goal to his credit this past season. Fielded by Eccles, comes straight up the middle, slips and falls as he tried to cut sharply to his left near the 25, fell out to 27. A 19-yard kickoff return. Now Brian Eccles had an opportunity maybe to bust that thing real big. A lot of green in front of him before he lost his footing. Very outstanding East Drive. Eight plays, 81 yards in 320. Tim Youngblood, that four-yard touchdown pass to Tim Stroke. Five of uh, nine, seven in that drive, I believe, for 59 yards and that touchdown pass. Outstanding coming out of the blocks for that young man, Tim Youngblood. Marvin Wright, who hails from Saginaw, Arthur Hill, will operate the West team from the quarterback slot. First play from scrimmage is a keeper. He turned, faked the handoff both left and right, lost the football, we got a player down, and... Uh, Wright was stacked up for a loss of about a half yard. This is Eric Zykus, who is limping off the field. Looked like he may have uh, banged up the left leg a bit. And while Zykus hobbles off to be attended to by the uh, West training staff, you're going to see uh, everybody make sure that they get things clogged up on that east side. However, the handoff was missed by uh, Marvin Wright, as you saw there, right along uh, with the his fullback for the uh, the West, Greg Vargas, just never made connection. Morgan is split to the left. Eccles is flanked to the right on second down and about 10 yards to go. He's back to throw. Throws incomplete. Intended for Eccles. He had the ball slip in and out of his hand at the 31-yard line. Fell incomplete. Well, there's a look at uh, Eric Zykus at 6'5", 245-pound tackle that plays for the head coach of this West squad, Keith Fralick. Now uh, take a look here. As you see, uh, this was from play number one, and down on the uh, mid left of your screen, you saw Zykus, who came up with the uh, the injury, and we'll keep uh, an eye on him. As right now, as you see, he's uh, being attended to and about to be carted off. Marvin Wright coming up with a big third down player early. Got a slot to the left. That's Eccles. They're in the I formation. Now Eccles is in motion to the long side of the field as Marvin Wright rolls to the right. Hands off to Randy Kinder, cut sharply upfield as he approached the near sideline. He was driven out of bounds at the 34-yard line by Anthony Hughes. A gain of about uh, eight yards in the play. The offensive line looks like this for the West. Rose, Hadley, Nielsen, Glowacki, and Zykus, who is now on the sidelines. Here are the backs and the uh, receivers for the West. Right the quarterback, Kinder, Harden, Zamron, Kestrop, and Alvin Cook operating as the flanker. Take a look at that East defensive line. Omar Ruffin uh, off that left tackle with Anthony Hughes in the middle and uh, Tim Gramer on the right side. There's the three that play up front. The backers, George Douglas, Carl Reeves. Both of them extremely active. So is Matt Dube out of Gross Point North and Greg Weierman. You've got Snooks and uh, Nakia Dexter on the corner with Jeff Fisher and Chris Westover, your safeties. West short of a first down by yard. High snap from center. Zach Kemp is going to run the football. Cuts to his left. He's got some daylight. Hits the 35. Got the first down out to the 40. And drilled out of bounds over at the 40 and a half yard line. The snap was very, very high. And Kemp turned it into a first down. I don't know if that was by design. Obviously not. But give Zach Kemp a lot of credit here. Presence of mind. Now look at this. Now he could have got the putt away. Looks like he wants to throw the football at first. Now he says, hey, I've got some area to help move the sticks for my ball club. He was finally taken down uh, along that sideline by Chris Westover. But Zach Kemp has uh, given the West an opportunity to keep the football, Larry, as uh, 
he basically comes up individually outstanding in that first possession. Pretty good ad lib on his part. Jace Morgan goes wide to the left. That's the short side of the field. As a flanker, the right end is split. And we've got a whistle. Flag is down prior to the snap. It's right at the line of scrimmage. And it apparently is uh, offside assessed against the east. So that'll be a five yard walk off. The West will have a first down and five yards to go at the Western 46 yard line. Boy, the officials look pretty natty today. They're yeah, they do. Things. Yeah, absolutely. Try uh, that one in mid November. <laughs> no question, not in the state of Michigan. <laughs> Ivy Lofton, as we talked about, 1950 begins his coaching career. He's trying to see his East Ball Club uh, defensively duplicate what his offense gave him a moment ago. Marvin Wright on the reverse, hands to Echoes, kept to the far side at the 50, still on his feet, 45, and driven out of bounds at the 44-yard line by Jason Passione. A gain of about 10 yards, a little more then, and it is a first down for the West. It was Eccles on the toe to the pigskin. Now watch him sell this reverse off the play fake to Kinder. Look at the block right there. You just missed it top right of your screen. Greg Vargas got a, a good lick on uh, that corner as he wiped out Rick Lucas to provide Eccles the opportunity to go to that left side. There it is right there as Vargas comes up with the, uh, the big cleanup block. And Eccles with a good, fit, good bit of uh, running the football, stepping out of a couple of tackles for that 10. Jason Morgan splits wide to the right on first and 10 for the West. Hand off to Kinder, big hole across the 40, down to the 36-yard line, where he is hauled down by Mike Phillips, who came up quickly from the secondary. Phillips from Dearborn Fordson, a gain of eight yards on the carry by Randy Kinder. Well, the numbers are just outstanding, and take a look at what he can give you here. This is just uh, this sprint draw where he gets a chance to pick his hole. He gave you that little stutter step. And then did you see him deliver the blow also uh, on defensive back Mike Phillips? Now, take a look at it out of the end zone. You'll take a look at those blocks off the right side. Excellent block by Gary Glowacki. Glowacki got that uh, good uh, seal down to allow Kinder to slide through that hole. Marvin Wright tight into the center, turns. Fakes the handoff. He's going to keep the ball. Cuts up field. Cuts to his left at 35. Down he goes at the 36-yard line. A delayed quarterback draw, and Lyle Smith made the capture. It's a gain of three. It'll be second down and about three yards to go. Lyle Smith, that old stater out of Frazier. Take a look at Marvin right here. Down on the field before the contest. Uh, watched him very closely. He's got a lot of presence as a quarterback and as a leader, and he's so athletic. And as you see, uh, if you give him a little bit of room to uh, leap through some seams, he'll hurt you as uh, he scrambles out of the pocket, too. Right, Kinder, Eccles, Vargas, Larry. A lot of talent in this West uh, offensive side. You bet. It's a first down for the West. All just short of the 33-yard line. Marvin Wright changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Jekylls in motion to the left. Wright rolling to the left, gives to Kinder, tries to get outside, being chased, he's hit, still on his feet, and he's driven out of bounds to the far side. The initial contact was made by Lyle Smith, who chased him deep, and then he was driven out of bounds on the far side. I'll tell you what, too, as head coach Keith Fralick looks at it, check out number 74, Scott Shaw. You're going to get a chance to see him. Watch Shaw here with Kinder. He says, hey, you may have a little more speed than me, but he made sure that he had Kinder strung out so that Lyle Smith could come up and put that initial hit on as Larry just told you about. There's Shaw as he beat his block and was able to uh, try to chase Kinder down for a guy like Scott Shaw, Larry, and you're talking about a 290-pounder, uh, no small chore, big. chasing down Randy Kinder. Big, big man. It's a loss of three. It'll be second down and 13. They have a slot to the right. That's Eccles. He's in motion to the left, the short side. Two setbacks up tight. Right back to throw. Look. He's going long. He has got Morgan down there. It's overthrown in a little wide. Ray Henke was back with Jace Morgan, the man for whom the pass was intended. But it fell incomplete, and it's third down and 13. Uh, we're going to look at this right from the very end of it as you take a look at Henke and Morgan running stride for stride. A little contact there, maybe a little gamesmanship on, on both sides in the red and the white. Marvin Wright had a lot of air on that football. However, if he had looked on that deep post route into the middle, he had Brian Eccles at 180-pound speedster. Could have done some damage if Wright had seen him. He didn't, 
and Hanky came up with a defensive play on the corner for the East. So a big play facing the West team now as Morgan goes wide to the left. Eccles is set as a split right end. It's third down and uh, 13 yards to go. Marvin Wright under the center looking at uh, virtually a five-man front turns. Gives to his fullback Vargas straight into the middle. Gets across the 35 to about the 33-yard line, but very short of the first down, Greg Wireman made the tackle. Vargas, a big man from Fruitport at 6'2", 238. Yeah, he packs a wallop out of that fullback spot. Once he gets uh, going and gets a head of steam up, uh, he likes to deliver a blow on uh, defensive people himself. But give Weyerman a lot of credit there. The 215-pounder, very quick out of Woodhaven for the East, uh, smelled out that quick inside trap and uh, came up with a hit and took Vargas to the ground. Going to bring up fourth down on the, uh, the West right now. You can see if Zach Kemp dittos his earlier performance when he was in punt formation. It's fourth and uh, nearly 11 yards to go. They have everybody up close. As Kemp stands at his 49-yard line, gets a good snap, a high floating kick coming down into the end zone, and it'll be right out to the 20-yard line. We should point out that there cannot be a uh, an attempted punt block in this particular game, and that's one of the reasons everybody was away from the uh, goal line because there's going to be no return. They wanted to defend against the possible another run. They started to uh, give Zach Kemp a look just to provide a little bit of heat, but you can't block the punt. Let's take a look at how both these ball clubs are made up. You've got 44 players on each side, and you see as it's broke down by classes here in the Wolverine State, A, B, C, and D. From the big schools out of A, you can have eight, six, four, two, so on. Offensive players, 19 members as follows. Uh, the wide receivers, three, and the guards and tackles, three. Everybody else with a couple, and we'll develop that a little bit more as you've got 88 athletes from 88 different schools represented right here around the state of Michigan. And we're going to see them all this afternoon. We have a new quarterback for the East. His name is Matt Ford. Throws wide, caught on the far side of the field, brought down the right sideline of the 40-yard line to about 43. And it's a big first down, so it doesn't seem to make much difference to the uh, East puts in their quarterback. They seem to be connecting with abandon with their passing attack. Exactly. Horde comes right in and off play action. He's going to pick up where Tim Youngblood left off. Youngblood 5 of 7 in that first drive. Horde comes out and hits his first. You talk about names for athletes and, and in specific <laughs> a back. Jim Brown. Now, I, I, if he lives up to anything near to that, Larry, this young man's going to have an outstanding career ahead of him. He's had a fine high school career at Muskegon Heights. Ah, Horn, shouting up and down the line of scrimmage, setting up the uh, play. He's got a flank of the left, split uh, right end. And Ford on the draw, hands to Brown, cuts to his left across the 50, struggles across the 45, down the 44 yard line, and Carl Schultz finally hauled him down. I talk about living up the namesakes, uh, young man, Jim Brown. Uh, again, if you come anywhere near approaching big number 32 of Cleveland Brown lore, you're going to be something. Watch the move that he puts on Rick Hallern right here. Oh, Rick Hallern's going to remember that, the young cornerback out of Grand Ledge. Jim Brown gave him a leg, took it away, and he has uh, accumulated some uh, substantial yardage. Watch it again. Look at the move. Gave him that left leg, took it to the inside. The pursuit finally caught up from the backside as he was run down by Carl Schultz. It's first down for the East. East in front by a score of 7 to nothing. This is the Eastern team's first, second possession. It scored on its first possession of the game. Whoops. A mishandled snap ball rolling free to the other by the left. Mohit Murray was sort of frozen in time. He saw the ball but could not react quickly enough, and a Western man went diving in under and captured the ball to the West. So a big break on the turnover for the Western Division was Steve Rue covering ball for the West team. All right, let's take a look at it. The exchange, the snap that's so important, uh, just not made. Matt Horde had an opportunity to get on it. Football squirts away from him, and there's Steve Roon coming out of that secondary to get the football away from Moheed Murray. 
Everything going so very well for Ivy Lofton's football team in that first drive. Ford and Jim Brown had them on the march once again in this possession. And there's where Larry, a lot of not a lot of opportunity to work together during the course of a week comes back to bite you. It just happened at East first turnover of this football game. A different quarterback on this series for the West. Tim Crowley from Jackson Lumen Christie is in. Hands it off. The uh, play goes nowhere. It is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Perhaps shoved forward to into the Eastern Territory. It's about 49 and a half. It'll be second down, about nine and a half yards to go for the Western Division. Western team. Crowley comes to the near sideline to check in with Keith Freilich, who coaches at Okemos. He's the head coach of the Western Division team. Yeah, Frederick told us before the contest that both Marvin Wright and uh, Crowley have had uh, exceptional weeks in camp here. They're both throwing the football well and running the, the ball club smartly, and they're going to get a lot of time to express just that. Crowley back to throw over the middle. Hot at the 45-yard line. Dropped at the 44-yard uh, line. Number 42 over there. Well, an all-star contest like this, it's very tough to uh, sync up passing games. You got to stay pretty basic. You got to stay pretty elementary. And and this is just a quick drag route, about five yards, and the look back for the football in the middle. And uh, that is exactly uh, how the West picked up with Jason Zamorin right there. They're looking at a third and three right now out of Ithaca. Tight end on this side of the football, good size, six five, two ten. Showed he's got some hands grabbing that uh, connection from Crowley. Alvin Cook is flanked wide to the right. The strap is split left in. Crowley had trouble getting away from the line of scrimmage, stumbled and fell back at the 50-yard line. I don't know whether he was stepped on by one of his own teammates or just got his feet tangled up, but there was nothing going on positively for him. Well, Tim Crowley's going to talk with center Eric Nelson. Yeah, on the left foot, Larry, of Eric Nelson there. You see, I mean, that was a... Uh, a, a serious, serious drag between the two of uh, those, Nelson and Crowley, as they kind of uh, seem to be uh, locked up for sure there. It's going to cost uh, the West. They're looking at a fourth down and nine again, and Zach Kemp's going to have to come right back in the football game. Just 10 seconds left in the uh, opening quarter. Mason and Dexter are the deep men for the East. They're standing at their own 15-yard line, and Zach Kemp stands at his 30. Gets a good snap from the center. He's angling toward the near sideline and bounces at the 25, gets a good hop, goes out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. So time has expired in the first period. The East leads the West 7 to nothing. You're watching the East-West All-Star High School football game from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. It's the first down for the East. The ball is just inside the 20-yard line, very close to the 19. Matt Ford from Millington is operating at the quarterback spot for the East. East in front scoring the first time they had the football. It is 7 to nothing. Jim Brown is a slot to the right. Sam Hemke is split to the right, but ever so slightly. And they also have a wide receiver in the right, Jim Kerr. Left end tight. Ford throws to the side, caught by Kerr, shovels it back. On the lateral, it goes out of bounds, however. Mishandled by Derek Mason, and the East will retain possession. An interesting-looking play, mm -hmm. had it uh, functioned properly, may have been a big gainer. Well, how about Ivy Lofton telling us, well, you got to stay basic. you got to stay pretty elementary. This is not basic football. Kerr on the hitch and go. However, as you see, the football could not be handled by Derek Mason. If he could have handled that, secured it, I think he had room, Larry, to turn that corner for head coach Ivy Mason and uh, pick up some real estate. But again, you saw the no back look basically there as Brown came up in the slot. Yep. So uh, Ivy Lofton on the money telling us we're going to throw the football. A lot of confidence in Tim Youngblood and this young man, Matt Horde, who has been dead letter perfect, 22 yards on, on two bullseyes. Horde shouting across the field to Mason, who is set as a flanker. 
Uh, Horde back to throw again. He's throwing long. Mason is there. He's got it at the 40. Cut to his right. He is still struggling on his feet, trying to break that final tackle. But finally, he fell down at the 22 and a half yard line by Carl Schultz. Rick Holleran was there helping out a 59 yard pass play. A terrific job done by Derek Mason after he caught the ball. Watch this. Did he sell this or what? Look at him get the outstanding bite on the corner, and then he's running free eight yards. Gathered the football over his shoulder. He's not content with just having the big game. He's thinking six. Derek Mason almost able to pull away before he was finally secured and taken to the ground at the 23-yard line by Carl Schultz. I'll tell you what. Derek Mason has some uh, quality speed, 59 yards worth. Outstanding throw, too, from Matt Hort. Early stages of the second period, East leads 7-0, threatening to get on the board again. Ford back to throw, throwing toward the corner. He's got Kurt touchdown. Flag is down, however, at the five-yard line. We'll see what the infraction uh, may be. It may be pass interference, we'll say, in a moment. Well, it's going to be pass interference. Now, the question is, maybe Which are they going to call a pick here? But watch Kerr. He got bumped at the line, as you see the bump coming from Eric Monroe. I mean, he's running free. All Horde's got to do is get the football elevated enough to get it to him. Touchdown in the corner of the end zone. Second touchdown pass for East quarterbacks today. Kerr grabbing that one from quarterback Matt Horde. So, Jimmy Kerr out of De La Salle High uh, on the war in the city of Warren on the east side comes up with that uh, that touchdown toss. Hold on. Young Blood had his. Now Matt Horde has his as the East continues to offensively assault this West defense. Look at Horde, all kinds of time to throw. Hey, that's a quarterback's dream. You get that much time, you just wait for Jim Kerr to bust free, and you've got a quick six. Flag thrown on the flag. Flag thrown on the attempted conversion. 13 nothing is the score. The East is in front. 11-19 left to be played in this first half. Looks like it's an offside penalty that uh, will be assessed here against the West. Half the distance will see if that changes the idea of going for one or two. Apparently not. Nate DeLong stays on the field, and he's a sidewinder type and a very excellent kicker. Snap, spot, kick, a line shot goes through. I don't think it did, Larry. Wide. Yeah, I think it got that upright. It kind of slid off to the side. Kind of interesting, maybe, that Ivy Lofton doesn't uh, go for two there, but uh, at any rate, You've got uh, this contest at 13 nothing right now as Lofton's offense certainly being very productive. 13 to nothing, east in front of the west. We have 11 minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the first half. Let's take a look at this uh, touchdown throw from Matt Horde to Jim Kerr. We'll see it high out of the end zone. Again, Horde with all kinds of time. And credit the guys up front doing an outstanding job. Jim Kerr came off a little bit of bump and run coverage. And then basically, the corner turned him loose. The rotation from the safeties was not there. And Ivy Lofton's ball club back on the board again with that touchdown toss from a Matt Horde to Jim Kerr. This is a second 81-yard touchdown drive for this East ball club. It only took three plays. Of course, the big one being the 59-yard hit from Horde to wide receiver Derek Mason. 41 seconds is all as Matt Horde goes three for three in that drive. On the money, he was. Very impressive drive. It's 13-0 East, and the East will be kicking off with Brian Eccles and Sinike Moody as the deep men. Carl Schultz has now moved in there along with uh, Alvin Cook. So they have changed the deep men. You see them there for the West. I don't know if they're trying for an onside kick here or just what, but uh, it was covered at the 43-yard line. If they're using the element of surprise, it certainly was a surprise that this veteran observer. <laughs> well, I tell you what, too, Larry, though, Ivy Lofton, uh, as his ball club, as you see, has racked up 162 yards through the air in uh, base just three possessions to the West five. He's saying we're up 13. Let's maybe try to uh, get the football back and 
continue to uh, do damage through the air, you have to believe right now the East does not feel that the West hadn't shown them anything to this point that they can handle them defensively. Key for the East is to get the football moving themselves. The West, excuse me. It's Marvin Wright at the quarterback spot for the West, rolling to the right, hands to Kinder, trying to get outside. He's got a block, gets across the 45, and he's wheeled out of bounds to the far side at the 48-yard line. Wait till you see this from Brian Eccles. All of you that like wide receivers to block, watch Eccles. He has got the East, Lyle Smith lined up, and well, look at that stick he put on Eccles, on Smith rather, to let Randy Kinder get to the corner. Wide receivers that love to block. A lot of college football coaches say, you can't play for me, son, as a wideout unless you like to get downfield and block people. Randy Eccles showing you he's about that on that carry by Kinder. A gain of five for Kinder. It's second down and five for the West. Right to Kinder. They lose a tackler, reverses his field, being chased and hauled down from behind for a loss at the 41-yard line. Trent Lucas and uh, also Billy Ray Porter were there. A loss of seven on the play. Well, this is where Randy Kinder can become so dangerous when he ad-libs, when he changes direction. Watch it here. Now, see, he wants to bust this thing to the corner, but nothing but congestion over there. Take a look at Billy Ray Porter. That is a, a search and takedown mission for Porter. 180 pounder out of South Lyon. Came up with a big stop on Randy Kinder. Big thrill for a young man like Porter who takes down a guy who's one of the glamour boys in high school football all over the country. Headed for Notre Dame. Porter comes up with a big secure for the East. They're down in 12, a loss of seven. Ball between the 41 and two yard lines in West territory. West in possession, split right end. Marvin Wright turns, being chased, eludes the tackler, but not the second one. Knifing through quickly was Greg Wireman to make the tackle, wrapped him up, dropped him for a loss. Back at the 36, George Douglas was the first man through. Wright eluded him, but he could not dodge the second guy. You just said it, Larry. Give George Douglas a lot of credit because he set this thing up for Greg Wireman to clean up. Now look at Douglas. Doesn't buy this play fake and roll. Even though he missed Marvin Wright, it allowed Wireman to come and clean things up. Wireman and Douglas, two of those active people on the East defensive side. There's a good look at George Douglas, 6'3", 230 pounder out of Southeastern High School, east side of the city of Detroit. Played his high school football uh, in the Jungleer program. As you could see, uh, good size, and as we saw off that corner linebacking spot, with a good feet and very active to uh, disrupt some offensive uh, flow from the West. There was a flag on the play, but it was illegal use of the hands against the West. Naturally declined to buy the East, and the West is putting. Nakia Dexter is back deep at his own 30-yard line, uh, waiting the snap and the kick, and it's a long floating kick back to the 19-yard line. Derek Mason was down at the 19-yard line. He squirmed free and ran for daylight on the far side, but this whistles were sounding all over the place. A 45-yard punt with no return. Outstanding special team work. Take a look at it as Mason tries to back this thing down. You'll see the initial hit there, and then both Eric Monroe and Charlie Bush from that West squad like to play those special teams. Holler made the initial hit. You get a chance to fly, run around, and go after the football. And if you're a tenacious football player, you can't ask for any more than that. Plain special teams, a lot of fun, no question. Jim Young, or Tim Youngblood is back into the ball game for the East, operating at the quarterback slot. He has a lone back behind him. A pair of flankers to the left. Youngblood back to throw, being chased, steps forward, hits, he loses the man, gets across up to the 20, returns to the line of scrimmage, finds some daylight far side, and drops at the 22-yard line. Big-time scramble for Tim Youngblood, wound up gaining about three before Greg Spranger finally wrapped him up. Joe, yeah, or Tim Youngblood, we keep saying Joe, I'm guilty of that because uh, followed uh, brother Joe at Central Michigan last year where he was outstanding, but yes, Ed Libbing, I think young Tim Youngblood maybe uh, traveled somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 yards to get a couple, but he had that pop put on him by Springer, that 225-pounder out of St. Francis up in Traverse City. So Youngblood is able to pick up, uh, well, we'll call it about three and make it second and seven, Larry. Kerr is flanked wide to the right. 
as a flanker, the left end is split. It would be Derek Mason who has had a big catch already today. Young blood back to throw. Sandusky charging him, completes the pass to Al Barnett down the sideline, 45, and shoved out of bounds at the 48-yard line by Greg Spranger. Well, young blood is not choosy about his receivers, is he? He's using them all. He's spreading around the wealth, Larry. No question about it. This is the third catch on the afternoon for Al Barnett. Look at here with the football and then turns it upfield going north south and Barnett is a big one as we told you about standing 6'6 weighing 245 pounds and he laid a lick on Kyle Klein in that defensive secondary give Al Barnett 24 yards move the chains again for the east as they continue their assault after losing the last two to the west here in Spartan Stadium Al Barnett's going to make Gary Blackney a very happy man with that Bowling Green Falcon program as he's uh, Looks like the real deal at tight end. Two wide receivers to the right. Youngblood fakes the handoff, back to throw. Hits Barnett again. That's this time he is hit immediately for a loss. Back at around the 45-yard line, Steve Oganski made the contact. He'll say his forward progress was stopped at the 44, so that's a loss of a pair. Hey, good to see Eric Zykus back. Uh, Zykus, who left the contest uh, on cart early, uh, actually first possession of the West, back. So the 270-pounder uh, who played for his head coach in this football game, same man who was his head coach in high school uh, here at Okemos in the Lansing area, Keith Freilich, has Zykus back. We'll see if Eric gets back in the fray. It's second down, 13 for the East. The East leads 13 to nothing with eight minutes left in the opening half. Youngblood on the draw to Gilbert. Goes up the middle, that's Gillert. Across the 45 to just short of the 46-yard line. Stacked up there by the Western team. And it'll be a third down and uh, almost 10, a little bit more than 10. They get a good look at Brian Zapancic. Zapancic, the 225-pounder out of uh, Grand Rapids, playing that inside linebacking spot. Central Catholic up there. Mike Fordham also in on that hit. Starting to see a little bit more uh, enthusiasm, energy, and uh, some more activity out of this West defensive front as they've just been waylaid by this uh, East onslaught here in the first quarter and a half. This is just the second time the East has faced a third down situation this afternoon. Youngblood going long, it is incomplete. It hit Derek Mason in the uh, shoulder pads, I believe, as he was hit by Kyle Klein and Clarence Love. And the ball fell incomplete, it'll bring up fourth down and 13. Clarence Love with Mason stride for stride. The pump fake, Youngblood with time and again. See, he was trying to put some air under it to let Mason get the wheels there. But Love and both Kyle Klein came up with uh, the bang-bang hit. Time the football hits Mason's hand, they were there to at least cause contact. Mason couldn't hang on. See Klein coming from his free safety spot. This is what you must do to be an active free safety. You've got to be able to rotate in that coverage when you're playing center field and get to the boundaries. Kyle Klein did it there. Give him an A for that effort. On fourth down, Nate DeLong is putting. The left-footed kicker hanging it high, gets a big hop around the 20, and it is down at the 21-yard line by Ryan Bauer. It is 13 to nothing, east in front, less than seven minutes left in the opening half. You're watching the 13th annual Michigan All-Star High School football game from East Lansing. East in front by a score of 13 to nothing. We have six minutes, 59 seconds left in the opening half. And this entire ball game thus far has belonged to the East. Larry, we talked about uh, their offensive proficiency. They've certainly had that. The West not in step offensively yet. Yes, we'll credit some of that East D, but uh, they've got to move some chains and have some possession time here. Tim Crowley in a quarterback for the West and throws a strike to Alvin Cook who made a diving catch at the 24-yard line. The pass looked like it was intended for uh, Zamron, but was behind him, and Cook just sliced through and made the catch, you see. Yeah, Cook uh, with that uh, route straight up this left sideline here, and if that pass was intended for Zamoran, Cook certainly with enough presence of mind to uh, be there for this West football team. Tim Crowley, he's two for two for 13 yards as he has uh, 
alternated with Marvin Wright at the quarterback spot. And again, maybe it's going to take a big play for the West, but they need something, a spark, a little bit of impetus offensively to change the complexion of this football game. Williams is flanked to the left on the second down as the West comes to the line of scrimmage. Crowley, with a long count, is back to throw. Throws wide, bounces in and out of the hands, and it was intercepted, I believe, by uh, George Douglas. It popped into the hands. It was thrown directly into the hands, actually. of Zamorod popped out of his hands and directly into George Douglas' hands. We'll see whether he was in balance when he made the catch. I believe he was. Yeah, I told you a moment ago how active this southeastern jungle era of the city of Detroit is. Look at him. Now, see, he's playing off some contain over here. Look at number 80. Zamorod saw Douglas, wanted to turn up field and uh, gather some of that green that he thought he had ahead of him. Wasn't to be. See? Doesn't secure the football? Look at Douglas. That's a good catch. You talk about tip drills, and then, Larry, as you saw, with enough presence to drag those feet like a receiver, he doubled as a tight end at Southeastern to make sure that he stayed in bounds. That's a great play from George Douglas. The Matt Horde is on the field as the quarterback for the East as they try to put some more points on the board before this first half expires. East already in front, 13 to nothing. <laughs> Ford has Kerr flanked wide to the left. Ford turns. He's back to throw. Now dumps it to the right side and is caught on the right wing by Jim Brown down the sideline for the 20. And out of bounds he goes at the 17 and a half yard line. This young man continues to amaze, Larry. This is the fourth time he's touched the football. He seemingly has this ability to turn something negative into a whole lot positive. Now they sold this fake screen left. Watch Brown. He's going to step through one, two, three, three red jerseys, turns it, as I said, into something that uh, moves the chain, first down inside that red zone, 16 yards for Jim Brown. He's been outstanding so far, making his namesake proud, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Indeed he has been. It's first down for the ace ball just inside the 18-yard line. Jim Kerr goes wide to the left. Couple of sets back, setbacks, Brown and Davis behind the board. Mason in as the uh, tight right end on this set for the East. Back to throw, downfield, incomplete. He had to unload, I think, a little early. Pass was intended for Jim Kerr, but fell near the goal line and complained and bring up second down. A little bit of pressure being applied. I believe it was Andy Staten that came in. And I think Lamonzer Williams also is going to have a hand in this. Now watch from the uh, up part of your screen. There's number 10. Yeah, Williams, Lamonzer Williams with the, uh, the takedown, the delivery hit, if you will. And there you see that flag, and it's going to cost the East as uh, they're going to have to move this huddle back, and it's going to be a major one, which certainly... Uh, helps Keith Freilich's ball club because uh, they are back in their heels down 13 nothing, and just having uh, another turnover and having that pass picked off. It's a five-yard penalty against the uh, Eastern Division. You're right. If the West can go in trailing by only 13, they're still very much in the ball game. Mm -hmm. They're good by down by 20 or more. Then you really got to scramble. You got it, and they may have to hit some uh, some home runs to borrow uh, an expression in order to get back into it. But let's see if defensively they could come up. Uh, equal to the challenge here as the East goes knocking at the door again as we're inside six minutes left in the half. Like I said, it was a five-yard penalty. It was a 10-yarder for illegal use of the hands against the offense. It is first down and 20. Back the throw. Matt Ford throws wide and overthrown on the far side. It was intended for Jim Kerr at about the 18-yard line on the far side, but too high for Kerr to handle. Matt Hort just missed this, and if he had it back, he probably knows he could uh, take a little bit off. Didn't need to throw the fastball there. Uh, the slider would have done. Again, Carl, that baseball phrase is uh, he had Kerr on that, uh, that break to the boundary along that far side, but uh, just too tall for Jimmy Kerr, who caught that touchdown pass from Matt Hort a moment ago. Concern on the west sideline, Larry, and uh, I think that's pretty much on the money right now, as you just said. They need a turnover here. They had an East lead to come out of this with no East points. Kerr flanked wide to the left. They have set Derek Mason as a split right end. The wing to the right is Brown. Lone setback carries the football. That's Davis. All the way down to about the 17-yard line, and he's back to near the original line of scrimmage. I like the call. It's an inside trap right here. And you're going to see the work of Sabia Davis now. But look, he got those nice stand-up blocks. 
along that front line. Big Steve Klingelhafer, along with Mohit Murray, were able to seal their people off. Look at Klingelhafer. He's looking for a red shirt to get a hat on. Didn't get that, but didn't have to. Sabia Davis stepped through it. Davis an outstanding back from Taylor Truman. You see Bill low to the ground, 190 pounds. Tough to corral, Larry, when you hit him low because he's got that big legs and strength down there in the thighs. It's third down and 10 yards to go. Matt Horde will be the quarterback under the center at the 17-yard uh, line. Goes straight back now to his right, throws to the near sideline, and is caught. He's hit immediately, driven out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Derek Mason hit and uh, driven out by Sanike Moody. Well, Derek Mason certainly uh, has been a player, and I put an exclamation point behind that in this contest. This is a simple square out, this five-yard square out. Uh, it's going to bring the East Ball Club uh, up looking at uh, in the neighborhood of about fourth and five. Mason uh, has caught passes today that have certainly helped this East attack of Ivy Lofton. And the guys from the Public School League out of Detroit, Derek Mason and George Douglas, that linebacker with interception, have been key components for Ivy Lofton's football team. Interesting situation here now, Michael. Four minutes, 37 seconds left in the first half. East in front, 13 to nothing. They're facing a fourth and five. Have called for a timeout, probably to discuss whether they want to go for the first down or let Nate DeLong put three on the board. He's been a very accurate kicker, we've been told, over his career, and he has a very strong leg. So this would be more, not much more than just a chip shot for him. Oh, you're right, Larry. One of the most heavily recruited pure kickers, and there's a good look at Nate DeLong, out of uh, the entire country this year. Gary Moeller got him, and from what I understand, this young man has a chance to go right in and challenge and maybe win a job at the University of Michigan this year. You see he's got size, 6'3", 205. Great technique to go along with the strong legs out of Wyandotte Roosevelt. There's that West football team we're talking about as uh, they get in their huddle and talking, over, talking it over with their defensive coordinator, Jack Sugars, out of Muskegon Oak Ridge as uh, they try to uh, avoid more points going on the board here against them. It appears that Matt Horst coming back on the football field, though. We don't see Nate DeLong. Uh, Larry, this would tell us, as a sun drenched crowd here in Spartan Stadium watches on, that Ivy Lofton's looking for six or seven, not just the three. If they fail, the West would still be in rather poor field position to begin operations for the final four and a half minutes of this first half. So apparently, Lofton feels, let's give her a go. See if we can get six or seven more. And on the flip side of that, he says, I think my defense has shown they can handle this West squad. Uh, to this point, uh, why not? It's been demonstrated very well. Tight end. Now Mason has moved out to the left. Kerr is set as a slot to the left. Pair of running backs, Brown and Davis. Ford turns, fakes the handoff, rolls to the left, throws, caught by Brown. He's at the 10, turns the corner and wrestled out of bounds after the first down has been picked up at about the eight yard line. Well, I've fallen in love with number 44 already. Jim Brown, six foot, 195 pounder out of Madison Heights. Very, very close to that first down. I'll tell you what, he did an outstanding job in stepping through a tackle of Eric Monroe. Now, Monroe had a chance to get him. You're looking at Derek Mason trying to uh, put that uh, stand-up shield block on Brian Eccles. Eccles got the hit on Jim Brown, but what you didn't see is Brown stepped through that hit of Eric Monroe. If Monroe was able to secure him, he would have brought Brown up a couple yards short. Football would have went over right now, though. West Ball Club certainly in trouble as the East continues to pound, pound, pound offensively. Ball of the hash marks far side, just inside the eight yard line. It'll be a first and goal for the East that has played very impressively on both sides of the ball this afternoon. 428 left in the opening half, East 13, West nothing. Both Tim Youngblood and Matt Horde have been as advertised. Very impressive at their quarterback spot. And a flag is thrown, perhaps a delay. It is a delay of the game. That'll move the ball out to uh, just inside the 13-yard line. It'll make it a little more difficult for the East, although, as we observed here this afternoon, it seems as there is uh, no obstacle too difficult for this team to overcome. You got it right on the money, Mr. Osterman. They're uh, getting anything they want right now. You, and you talked about a moment ago how uh, 
quarterbacks Tim Youngblood and Mac Hort are sharing the wealth. Derek Mason, three catches, 71 yards to this point. Jim Brown, who has been so terrific uh, coming in to ignite this offense, three catches for 43 yards. So a lot of weapons, a lot of opportunity to go to uh, different people, which has the West defense uh, a little bit confused in a state of flux right now. First and goal at the 13-yard line. Mason flanked to the right. Ford shouting over to Jim Kerr, who is set as the split left end. Ford back to throw. Looks downfield. It was knocked down right at the line of scrimmage. And I believe it was Lamanzer Williams that got the big right hand up there to knock it down. That's a man, 6'4", 225 pounds. He played his high school football at Willow Run. Watch him. You see him slide through. Good swim move. And that big uh, left hand extended in the air to swat down that pass of Matt Horde. And, of course, Lamanzer is going to let Mr. Horde know about it as maybe this is something that he feels uh, can get a little, as I talked about a moment ago, energy and enthusiasm surrounding uh, his West Ball Club. Sometimes those things are infectious, Larry. I think Lamanzer Williams hopes that's the case right now. Get second and goal from the 13. Kerr flanked wide to the right. It's the long side. Mason split left. Kerr of running back. Ford turns, dumps it off, and was it cut? We shall see. Mm. It's going to be scored as a circus catch. Outstanding from Jim Brown. Oh, I had the field glasses on. Looks to me like that ball may have taken a little short hop. We shall see. But if it was a catch, it was a brilliant catch by Jim Brown. Well, we'll see if Mr. Osterman is correct. Aaron Kukla came up off uh, that mm -hmm. corner to put a little bit of heat <laughs> on quarterback Matt Horde. Osterman, you still got the good eye. Well. There's Gary Glowacki, and he has done just an exceptional job in all three of these possessions for the West in the second half. Now, they moved the ball. They moved the sticks. They haven't got on the board yet. Six foot, 205 pounder. He's going to play for Herb Duramity at Central Michigan. Sioux St. Marie, that Blue Devil program. Uh, Coach Ralph Cernowski and Glowacki, uh, one of those guys up front, Larry, that's so vital when you run this kind of offense, as we talked about. He and his... Uh, his uh, partner up there in that guard spot that's getting a lot of play opposite him, Mr. Jeff McConnell, have just been terrific in opening these holes for Kinder and Harris and Vargas and Ryan. It was indeed a very impressive third quarter for the West, but they have nothing to show for it. Now right back to throw. He's being chased to the far side, reverses, unloads, and falls incomplete. Oh, he was under some severe pressure. Ryan Bauer, the... Big guy from Marysville did everything but nail him twice. And finally, Wright got rid of it and avoided a huge loss. Well, hasn't the East defense just zeroed in on Marvin Wright in particular today? Harassed, not much time to throw. He wanted to hit this, uh, this deep go route on the left sideline. It just wasn't there. You see all the white shirts coming big after him. He lucky he got rid of that football uh, without round being called for intentional grounding, but maybe now the late flag did get him for just that. Yeah, it looks to be the case. I don't know if Keith Freilich agrees with that. It did come late, but bottom line is uh, Marvin Wright is going to turn over the football. It shows 46 seconds left, and uh, I know we've got a whole lot more than that because we just started the fourth period. Yeah, everything's going to skew with uh, the boards here in Spartan Stadium right now. But uh, again, Zach Kemp has to come out. Boy, third quarter time of possession, just about unbelievable. West 1049, East 111. So that shows you that means absolutely nothing. That is unbelievable. It really is. The West, by far, had the best of the uh, third period. It was the intercepted pass that, of course, that kept them from getting on the scoreboard at that time. This has been a very impressive drive up until this particular penalty. And now time has been called. Uh, actually, it has been called by uh, the West team. I thought perhaps an official timeout may be taken to fix the timepiece, but uh, that apparently is not the case. We'll see what happens when we come back. You're watching the Michigan State High School All-Star football game from East Lansing.
some of the Western stars on the sidelines. Now the intentional grounding cost the West 10 yards from the point that the ball landed, plus a down, so it's third and 19. Ball at the 45 and a half yard line. Right rolling to his right. Spin still on his feet. Cuts back to his left. He's got a blocker. Turns the corner to 45, 45, 50, 45, and out of bounds. He got the first down in the East Territory. Bruce Calhoun finally drove him out of bounds. George Douglas was also putting some heat on. A gain of 14 for Marvin Wright in the West keeps possession. Well, Larry, I don't know if uh, head coach Keith Fralick had uh, a few stern words for Marvin Wright in that elongated huddle, but best day at live of the day from the signal caller from the West. Carrying that football like a loaf of bread out there in the inside hand, the right hand. Didn't get burnt by it on this occasion, and he's got his ball club back to fourth and five as Wright kind of comes off a little bit gimpily to the sideline. Tim Crowley back in. You got to go for it here. Fourth and five. 40-yard line to the east. You're down 22. No time to send Zach Kemp out here. Nothing to lose. Absolutely. Eccles split wide to the right. He's the flanker now. Up on the line of scrimmage. The left end. And a big pile up back on the 45-yard uh, line. And the east will take over the football. It has simply hurt the West all day long every time they were in a position maybe to put something on the board, at least just keep possession of the football. Tim Crowley comes in. Exchange of the snap is not good. Jeff McConnell not aware that the football was under him. Mike Ryan got his hands on it, but it didn't matter because fourth and five was facing Keith Fralick's ball club. They turn it right back over to the East. Only their second possession now, the East, in the second half. Much better operating room, Larry, than the last one when they started from their own two. Yes, and could do nothing with it. 11-20 left in the game. Tim Youngblood is in at the quarterback spot now for the East. East scored in its first possession, and uh, it's been their ball game. Pass over to Reeves in the flat. Nothing there. He stopped for a loss back at the 42-yard line. DeMarcio Hill was the first man to meet Carl Reeves. Big man from Oxford, Michigan. Carl Reeves had to know when uh, Tim Youngblood unloaded this football. That's that uh, flanker screen, if you will, where Reeves just takes a step back and catches the football. Youngblood's number is very, very impressive. Hit 10 times for better than 100 yards. And of course, that touchdown throw, the first possession of this football game. So Youngblood's back at the quarterbacking spot with a lot of cushion, 22 nothing lead working with. Jim Kerr in to replace Carl Reeves. He's the uh, slot to the left now, and Derek Mason is split to the left. Kerr is in motion to the right, the long side of the field. Youngblood back the throw, dumps it over the middle, caught by Barnett, comes to the near sideline at the 46, and he is wrestled down as he approaches the 49-yard line. DeMarchio Hill had him wrapped up. Michael Fordham was also there. DeMarchio Hill has been extremely active on the defensive side, but take a look. See, upper right of your screen now, selling block over there is Al Barnett, and then he just drags off and in the middle of the football field. This didn't turn into a long game. Uh, they only got about four, but that's catch number six on the afternoon for Al Barnett. He has been uh, certainly outstanding for Ivy Lofton's football team, and again, you fans of the Mid-American Conference, you're going to see a lot of these guys in Mac schools specifically Central Michigan and Western Michigan. This big man's going to Bowling Green, as we said, to play for Gary Black. It's third down, six yards to go. The ball at the 49. Youngblood passes to Barnett, but he couldn't hold it. That's Gillert, number 98 rather than 88. Arnie Gillert coming out of the backfield. Barnett wears number 88. Larry, isn't it amazing? Even with the 22-0 lead, though, Ivy Lofton is not as going to change from uh, what put those 22 on the board, and that's throwing the football. Well, that, they may have put the emphasis on that game uh, throughout, so. yeah, throughout the entire week, and uh, you go with what brung you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that old line about uh, the girl that you brought to the day. You got it. Flag. Here's the kick by DeLong. Boy, he's been impressive all afternoon. Fair catch called for and taken by Alvin Cook at the 
12-yard line, a 33-yard punt to Ori Turpin. The flag down by the kicker, illegal procedure. There's also a flag down here at the 32-yard uh, line. Late hit there probably uh, on the East squad as Tim Hallern from the West got decked by Tim Stroke. I think the West is going to have their options of what they want here. See if we can see this late hit from the end zone. Illegal procedure against the East. Hmm. Well, it's not uh, two going against the East. I thought Stroke maybe would get nailed for this pop on Greg Heller. Well, there's the procedure call. Now watch here. Well, you're not going to see it because you will uh, pick it up only on the fair catch by Mason. We're going to get the kick over. Obviously, the East will have to do it again as Keith Fraley continues to wonder offensively if his ball club is going to be able to get a jump start here in the final 9-12 of this football game. And frankly, in the second half, they've come out with uh, the idea we'll dominate the line of scrimmage behind Glowacki and McConnell and run the football, and they've done that. Well, the turnovers have just killed too many men on the field as a penalty against the West. Offsetting penalties, they'll punt again. Nate DeLong delivers another high spiraling kick that takes a pretty good bounce all the way down to the six-yard line. He gets back out to the 10 before being dropped. 45-yard punt by Nate DeLong. It's been very, very impressive today. He has. I like the nerves of Alvin Cook. Alvin has five <laughs> white shirts around him, but uh, he said this football is creeping close to my goal line. I think I'll try to get it out of here. Give Nate uh, Alvin Cook some credit. Could have been uh, down at about the two or three. The speedster who wears number 40 in red took that football uh, back up uh, to the 10 anyway. Let's call it the nine, and we'll see if the West, uh, again, as we go under nine minutes, can make something happen. Tim Crowley is in for this series at the quarterback spot for the West. Crowley straight back to the throw. Fires it over the middle, completes the pass to the 15-yard line. Greg Wireman made the stop. That's the uh, catch made by Jason Dameron. Dameron uh, from Ithaca. Big guy, 6'5", 210. Impressive tight ends in this football contest. Both sides of the football, Zamorin and, of course, Al Barnett uh, from the East. It's caught six balls today from the quarterbacks in the East. East, the defensively, is saying right now that we'll uh, give our, our West friends all of this that they want because they are uh, 84 yards away from the end zone, and if they want to hit five, six-yard routes, we'll let them have them up for the rest of this contest. Crowley hit behind the line of scrimmage, and down he goes. Anthony Hughes had him with one hand, spun him around, and dropped him. Anthony Hughes is a 270-pounder, and I'm going to tell you what. You look at the big man, this trailblazer from Detroit Central. He's playing alongside Omar Ruffin, a 290-pounder out of Detroit Denby. Both of those guys playing right now, and there's Hughes, the big man that uh, plays for head coach Woody Thomas at Central Detroit Public School League. Down for the, uh, the East right now is Greg Weyerman, that 215-pound defensive lineman. So Weyerman, along with Hughes and Omar Ruffin, the three up front. See if we can take a look at this. You can get right inside the helmet of Tim Crowley. See Ruffin coming? There's Hughes coming. Big Hughes, Tyrone says, I will not let you go. Weyerman got in on the bottom of that. Greg is up right now and uh, certainly seems to be in good stead as he walks off the football field. There's Hughes. Now watch Wireman. See him coming? Left of your screen. Maybe got a stinger in that left shoulder up around the neck area because uh, he went in helmet first. West is two for nine in uh, third down situations. That's what the West faces now. Third and nine. Well, at the uh, 10 yard line. Crowley being rushed, steps forward, unloads, a wobbly pass, it is intercepted at the 20 yard line. Diving forward to the 18 was Jason Snooks, and it's another big interception for the East squad, which leads already 22 to nothing. One of the smallest players in this 13th annual Wolverine State Classic, only 160 pounds. Uh, that might be with that full gear on, too, Mr. Osterman, but. <laughs> He plays for Al Fracasa at Birmingham Brother Rice, one of the tradition-rich programs in the Detroit area. 
Tim Crowley cannot throw the football like that. I know he felt heat, but first of all, you're going to get your receivers hung out to dry, as he just did on Jason Zamorin. And then watch the pick from young Mr. Snooks, who came up and wearing the colors of uh, the Warriors of Brother Rice. And with the shaved head also with the INT, Jason Snooks. So Matt Horn steps in as the quarterback. He's got Jim Brown right behind him. He's the only running back. Kerr is split to the right. Horn back to throw, looks downfield, throws to the end zone. It is out of bounds. Caught by Jim Kerr, but he had crossed the sideline stripe in the end zone and took it up into the nickel seat. Yeah, you gotta love Jim Kerr. He's thinking, oh, here's my second touchdown of this All-Star Classic. Now watch him. See it right if we can catch it well we just missed it but he took a look while that football was in flight as to where he was as he was going to the boundary didn't quite drag that one foot to keep it in bounds it's all right Jim you've already got that one six point hit to your credit today but the East looking for more numbers on Horde 8 of 14 133 yards touchdown toss it went to Jim Kerr he was looking for number two with his wide out on that last play. 6.55 left in the game. It is 22-0 East. East looking for more. Horde back to throw being rushed and dropped for a big loss. It was Kukla, I believe, that came roaring through Aaron Kukla. And there was no opportunity for Matt Horde to unload the loss of 14. Give Matt Horde credit for one thing. He didn't throw the football up for grabs. You see Kukla coming in. Kukla got some help from his uh, partner back there in that secondary, Jason Sandusky out of St. Joe's. So Kukla and Sandusky, two guys uh, out of that secondary. Sandusky actually standing up on that outside backer spot with a lot of pressure on Matt Hoare. But again, best thing Hoare did, Larry, didn't throw the football up for grabs. Take the loss, take the down, lose some yardage, and go back at it. And it keeps the clock running, and uh, it is down to about six minutes remaining. Kerr flank to the right. Ford back to throw. Being rushed, wrapped up, still looks, and now a moves, intercepted, picked off by Steve Rune. The race is on, and Rune will win. He'll go the distance for a touchdown for the West. But all the praise that you, was, you were giving Matt Ford, Larry, he wasn't listening, was he? I no sooner got it out of my mouth what an exceptional job Ford did in just taking the loss, not throwing the football up for grabs. That's exactly what he did on that play when he should not have. Rune right there. Matt Horde has been exceptional today. This is one he wishes he had back. Matt, you got to go down here. He's going down anyway. Just throws it into a crowd. Steve Rune with the pick. And just like Nakia Dexter from the east, he'll take it the route. Rune goes the distance. 64 yards to the end zone. The West gets on the board. Do they have enough time to get back in this thing? They're down 16 right now. Five minutes, 48 seconds left to be played in the game. Kemp will spot the try for the point. And got a flag down, perhaps a delay. It didn't take long for the uh, famous man to start signing, huh? <laughs> I guess if you go to the end zone from 64 yards away, you run for the pen and uh, start giving out the autograph. I will try it again with 548. Left to be played in the game. It'll be a try for the point by Adam Williams. If indeed they go for the extra point. Well, we may never get good enough. We'll never find out, will we? <laughs> you know what? I think now <laughs> Keith Fralick is either going to go for two. Is McConnell and Vargas and Eccles are coming back onto the field. I think they're just going to go for two now. Now Marvin Wright's going in the football game. Uh, this uh, has not been good, us trying to line up for extra points, so uh, we won't bother with it anymore. 22 to 6 is the score, and the East is in front. You can bet the house at the West after this try for two. We'll 
attempt the onside kick, hoping that that will give them possession again. T formation, both ends tight. And off fake, right rolling to his right. He's in trouble. Throws it into the air, and it falls incomplete to the end zone. So it is still 22-6 east, and Wesley kicking off. George Douglas all over Marvin Wright. Off play action. I think Wright actually wanted to follow Vargas Ryan and Kinder and try to run it in. We've seen a lot of ad-libbing from quarterbacks today, and quite frankly, not much of it has been successful. That's usually the case. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a very good point. Old veteran football observer. <laughs> old, perhaps. <laughs> no, I said oh, old oh, oh. veteran football <laughs> observer. Not old. Oh, no. Well, we shall see what transpires. The West undoubtedly will attempt an onside kick, see if they can get possession, and see if they can get another six and turn this game into uh, at least a competitive event. You know, for all of the uh, the movement they've done, uh, most of it on the ground here in the second half, isn't it ironic that when they finally do get on the board, it's uh, from an ill-advised decision out of Matt Ford's quarterbacking hand. But yeah, you see the onside kick here, Larry, and who knows, they get another quickman and then they're right back into things right now. Like to now speaking of that touchdown, let's take a look at that again on this interception return. We'll take a look at this, too. Now, watch number 44. Jim Brown, he showed up and Ford saw him out of the corner of his eye, I'm sure. He'll be real late, but he didn't see him. Right. He certainly did not see, of course, young Mr. Rune, or Rune, rather, excuse me, Steve Rune, who took that thing the route 64 yards worth. So we've had two very long interception returns for touchdown today from the Kia Dexter and now from Steve Rune. One for the East, one for the West. Matt Horde, I gave you all that praise. He's shaking his head. <laughs> gave him all the praise for that great presence he had in the play before he threw the INT. You know, but that's just, Larry, we give him credit, trying to make something happen. Trying to make it happen. Oh, you get the option here of asking for the football when you're down by uh, more than 20. So the West gets their hands back on it, but they better get on it. He brought it out to the seven-yard line. Greg Vargas did. Looked like it might be a big trouble. That was a free ball. But he got Looks back like in time to bring it back out of the end zone. Larry, let me clear this up. Uh, if you are down by more than uh, two touchdowns, you get your choice after you score of whether or not you want to get your hands back on the football. Some choice. Huh? Who's going to say yeah. no? I mean, obviously, you're going to want to get the football again. First down in the second half. Four for the West. None for the East. Ivy Lofton's offense, the East head coach, has come to a complete standstill, but they've only had the football a couple of times here in the entire second half. Marvin Wright back at it. He's got uh, 92 yards if he wants to put more points on the board. The clock started to become a factor with five and a half left. Wright is the quarterback on first down. Nothing there for Randy Kinder. It's not been a good afternoon for Randy in the rushing department. They just haven't given him any running room. When Randy gets to the Golden Dome in South Bend, he may see more daylight than he has seen today. This East defense has swarmed, and he's been a marked man. There's no question about it. You come in here with the kind of fanfare that Randy Kinder has, and he's only averaging about two and a half, as you see the numbers, 11 carries for 27 yards. Uh, very comparable to a young man that we showed in uh, our open to the show, Tyrone Le Wheatley, uh, Larry, who's a, the definitive Heisman Trophy candidate in Ann Arbor for Gary Moeller this year. But that's the comparisons that Randy Kinder's drawing. This time the handoff goes to James Harden, who spins his way across the 10 out to about the 12-yard line. Tackle was made by Jason Facione. First time we've seen James Harden carry the football today. He's out of Battle Creek Central, a very uh, tradition-rich program in the city of Battle Creek. Is, it is, for, is this it for Randy Kinder today? Has uh, had to take a seat right now and give way to Harden. I saw him limping as he came off the field. There looks like you were looking at his left ankle, but he's got kind of a smile on his face, so apparently it's nothing serious. And a false start in the backfield by Mike Harris. And as a result, there'll be a five-yard walk-off against the West for illegal procedure. Four minutes, six seconds left in the game. The East leads it 22-6. Little Kinder. 
Yeah, East Lansing High School, right in this very city. And as I said in the open of our show, a lot of broken hearts that wear green and white for George Perlis's program. This was the guy they keynoted to get. He's an All-American running back, as judged by uh, coaches and media all over the country. And George Perlis, unfortunately for Michigan State, was not able to land him and keep him home here in Spartan Stadium. Jace Morgan split to the right. Wright is back to the throw, being rushed, hops into the air. I believe it'll be ruled as a forward pass, it is. Falls incomplete. He had big time pressure from Rick Lucas coming in from the uh, left side, and there was another coming in from the right, and Wright didn't have much of an opportunity. That's my man George Douglas from Southeastern, Larry, who was coming in from the right side as we take again a look at Randy Kinder. Douglas and Lucas, the outside backers of this East football team, they've had carte blanche all afternoon to come off these corners and just go after Randy Wright, who unfortunately, or Marvin Wright, excuse me, who unfortunately have fallen right now. There's George Douglas, that big Southeastern jungleer who's come up with an interception and a good half dozen tackles or so in this contest. He's been uh, extremely quick afoot into the backfield of the West to cause and disrupt this West offense. Take a look at Douglas and Lucas right here. Each side, like bookends. Douglas is coming off a block there on the right. Lucas is going to track this thing down from the left, and they meet at Marvin Wright. Wow, both of them got hits. Lucas from the left side, Douglas from the right side, and Marvin Wright still down, unfortunately, on the carpet here at Spartan Stadium. Marvin Wright, of course, uh, a young man who is expected to uh, play a lot of football right here for George Perlis at Michigan State. Big star at Saginaw, Arthur Hill, during his high school days. I thought perhaps he may have had the wind knocked out of him because of that collision, but taking uh, quite a long time getting him ready to go again. There's three minutes and 45 seconds left in this game, which has belonged to the East team, in case you joined us late. The East scored the first time it had its hands on the football and has prevailed, although in the second half, you wouldn't think so if you looked at strictly the time of possession. As we've said so many times, this uh, time of possession thing can be about the most misleading statistic in all of football. They've played this contest 12 times, today being the 13th. West has won the last two. East trying to end that streak today. And, of course, Larry, we talked about a very close contest usually, eight of the 12 of them, decided by one touchdown or less. And what does the winning squad do? Uh, well, I don't know where they take it to a trophy case, but it gets into their possession anyway. And we're happy to see Everything's got to be someplace, they say. The all-star players, of course, they receive right their game jersey, instead of an all-star t-shirt and shorts, and tip a duffel bag, all-star cap in the program. Of course, you cannot receive any remuneration for playing in this game, but it's uh, just a, a big thrill for all of these kids to be involved, and it's just a, a, a very well-run operation by these coaches and everybody involved with it. And, our congratulations go to all of them. You know, we uh, echo those sentiments, Larry. Uh, outstanding work that's done by the entire Michigan High School Football Coaches Association and all the administrators that are involved with it for this product that they put on for now its 13th year here in Spartan Stadium. Zach Kep will punt from midway in his own end zone. Derek Mason is back at his 40. A high, another fine kick. He has to go all the way back to his own 45. He'll lose a tackle, but has finally wrestled down at the 49-yard line by Rick Holloran. A 47-yard punt, a three-yard return. I don't care if it was only three yards as we see Marvin Wright being worked on. If you're wearing an opposite jersey from Derek Mason, whether he is at a wide receiver spot or returning kicks, you better uh, make sure you've got a lot of friends with you. Hallern got the stop on this one. But Derek Mason is extremely shifty. He's got the quick feet. And if you give him just a little bit of room to operate, he is going to take it. Now, what? He knows that Holland's bearing down on him. See this? But he concentrates on the football. Most important thing, gather in that punt. Holland's hanging on for dear life. One, two, three, four. He's at five, six red shirts. Have to finally all wrap up. Derek Mason is Clarence Love, the 165-pounder out of Jackson High, uh, is going to have to be attended to here as he, too, Came up a little gimpy after that punt return. Speaking of punts, 
Kemp has kicked six times this afternoon, has averaged 40 and a half yards per punt. That's big league stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Clarence Love has uh, had problems getting off the field. He couldn't get anybody to help him for a minute. They were in the process of changing teams on the field. No one really noticed that he was in some pain. I think he banged up his leg or ankle. It's first down 10 for the East. Handoff goes to Stroke. Stacked up at the 48-yard line. Three minutes, 20 seconds left in the game. Obvious right now that Ivy Lofton, for the first time today, Larry, about 45 minutes into the contest, said, well, we'll change our offensive philosophy now. Let's keep it on the ground, try to uh, churn out this final three minutes plus and take our victory out of here and end our two-game losing streak. The East came out throwing and stayed in the throwing mode through virtually the entire game, and it has been a very successful effort for them. Jim Kerr, one of the offensive stars in the game, comes wide to the left as Tim Youngblood, one of the uh, two outstanding quarterbacks to have performed for the East, is operating at quarterback in this, what could be the final series of downs. Pass is complete. The stroke on the far sideline is drilled out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Clock is stopped with 2.34 left in the game. Well, if Ivy Lofton's listening to us, he says, hey, Michael, you're mistaken because uh, I have not decided to uh, close down our pass game for today. It's a controlled pass game, and Tim Stroke, the young man who caught the first touchdown pass, he, with a world-class sprint speed, going to play his college football at Yale, taking it to the Ivy League uh, to play in that very prestigious conference. Ivy Lofton turning that pass game loose again. Third and five. Might anticipate it one more time here. Joe trying to get outside. Does. Gets across the 25-20. Breaks free. He's going the distance. Touchdown East as Tim Stroke. Did just about everything on his own after he turned the corner and got downfield, broke a couple of tackles, and then scooted on in. A 45-yard touchdown run for Tim Stroke. Just talked about the flat-out wheels that this young man had. Tall sweep, right side. Give him a block. You see how he squares himself up, runs through a tackle right there of Clarence Love, and then levels off. Pushing blockers ahead of him, stepping through tackles, and gone but he apparently stepped out of bounds back at the 23 uh, yard line didn't see that signal uh, well, they've got the football at the 18 and the stake at the 23 would you care to explain that one <laughs> are you speaking to uh, our referee in this contest or me, <laughs> me. Okay, now, now the sticks are, see, I was just waiting for the sticks <laughs> to get uh, squared up with where the football is. They said he stepped out at the 18. Let's take a look at it from the end zone. Let's see if we get, get this line judge maybe that uh, had that uh, foot going out of bounds. Just stroke where he cuts back in, not out of bounds there. Not yet there. He's going to break it back inside, outside. Mm. Well, mm. interesting, very interesting. Stroke carries through the middle, breaks to the right side, spins around, and drops it off 12 yard line. There's plenty of offensive talent on this East football team. Tim Stroke, really, he was featured in that first series, and we hadn't seen much of him since. He's factor in the quarterbacks, Youngblood and Ford. Stroke out of this backfield, and with Jim Brown, Derek Mason, Jim Kerr, and Al Barnett, the three receivers, I can see why Ivy Lofton would want to try to spread this West yeah. defense, which is exactly what he's done, Larry. Exactly, and with a whole bunch of success. A minute 45 left in the game. Two of those standouts, Mason and Kerr, come wide to the left. Youngblood gives to his tailback. Up the middle goes Gillert. Touchdown. So what was taken away a moment ago has been recaptured. Six more points for the East. We're going to take a look at Gillert go into the end zone here as Arnie wearing number 98. Not a back number, but he goes his way to the end zone. You know, we're talking about the guys up front for the West that 
even though they hadn't punched it into the end zone on offense, did a great job. Some of these young men uh, from the east in that offensive front have given their uh, skilled people counterparts a great deal of operating room to work with. Brad Affolder, Jason Couch, and Bill Cockman specifically, guard, center, guard from left to right, up front for the east. 12-yard TD run for Gillard. And Larry, we're going to do this point after attempt all over again, aren't we? It hasn't been one of the highlights of this game, either team trying to try for a point. Offside against the West, and Nate DeLong will try again. And it's partially blocked, but got through. It is now East 29, West 6, with a minute and a half left in the game. All right, let's take a look at this touchdown run, this 12-yard jaunt from Arnie Gillard again. Watch it open up with those blocks. I told you about some people pulling. Look at the kick out there. Big number 51, Bill Coachman, came off that right guard spot of his. He really didn't even have a red shirt to go after until he got down near the goal line. As Arnie Gillard, who has not been one of the featured people that we just mentioned in the offense today, now getting the opportunity to express himself, if you will, with the football. Well, it's been a perfect afternoon in East Lansing, Michigan. Temperature very comfortable, around 75. Humidity relatively low, despite an early morning rain. The field's starting to dry out, a little wet along the sidelines. And a nice crowd on hand to witness what has been a very interesting game, despite the fact that the East has held the upper hand for the most part. Yeah, another touchdown drive. This one going 50 yards. They put some big ones together. That's three of them, 50 or better. 50, 81, and 81. This one took five plays, 204. Arnie Gillert. And a moment ago, you saw the big number 98 Go Arnie sign here in Spartan Stadium. Nate DeLong adds the PAT. And this one is... Uh, about to end a two-game losing streak for the guys uh, on the eastern side of the state of Michigan, Larry. East again will be kicking to the west with a minute and a half left in the game. DeLong kicks it long. Taken by Cook to the 20, and he has spun down at the 25-yard line, a 23-yard return for Alvin Cook. Young fellow from Three Rivers, Michigan. A year ago, it was a 20 to nothing lopsided West win. That was one of the rare lopsided games in this series. This is going to be, I believe, if my numbers are correct, Larry, if this holds up the largest margin of victory in any contest of the 13 that have been played. 23 point differential right now. Uh, yeah, that would hold up last year yep. at 20. A minute and 19 to go. Crowley is the quarterback, looks, throws to the near side, caught along the sidelines by the strop. 32-yard line, Dexter made the tackle. Dar to Strump with uh, a reception. Just that quick hitch, turn to the outside in the, uh, the three-step drop mode offensively here. Nakia Dexter, your touchdown man on the interception from the east, took a shot at Dar out of McCloy High, Monroe Hill. 40 seconds left in the game. Second down, four for the West. Crowley, hauled down from behind. He was run over by his own man. And then big Anthony Hughes, 6'3", 275, reached out and says, I gotcha. Yeah, he did that. We just talked about him a moment ago, that central high trailblazer out of Detroit. But he just ran right over the top of uh, Eric Nielsen, the center from the West. You showing superior strength and quickness, the ability to get off the football on the snap. Big job from him in the middle. Time has run out, and the 1993 Michigan High School All-Star football game has come to a close with the East winning it by a score of 29 to six. So a week of socializing, I'm sure, and a lot of hard work put in by these coaching staffs and all of the players involved. There were two days involved, and those are never any fun. Comes to a close with a, a very 
well played, a lot of sports, good sportsmanship shown on the field here this afternoon. There's the winning coach, Ivy Lofton from Royal Oak Dondero, put together a game plan that uh, was mighty effective today. No question about it, Larry. That man in 40 years has won a lot of football games, but judging by that smile we saw of his a moment ago and of his kids, uh, this one very sweet to be sure, although you see the camaraderie uh, like Nakia Dexter, number seven there from the east with uh, a lot of hugs and uh, glad handing of one another after this contest is done. But the east did dominate right from the, the get-go right on through. And offensively, uh, you don't expect maybe that kind of outburst in this type of football game as we've talked about all the way through, but it sure happened today. Sure did. So the high school careers of these fellows come to a close. They look ahead now to perhaps some collegiate stardom wherever they may be headed. 29-6 the final. We'll be back in just a moment on Passport. Well, there's the man, the winning coach, and uh, I guess this is getting to be sort of old happy, this guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he expressed a lot of excitement about being here and being a part of uh, young men from around the eastern half of the state of Michigan and he being the head coach of this program. But, yeah, Larry, as you said, 40 years of coaching, he, he knows what the racking up wins is all about, to be sure. Well, it was an interesting football game. We hope you enjoyed it. We've got some statistics that we'll uh, show you, and uh, some of them are somewhat misleading, but some of them tell the entire story. Example, passing yardage. Mm. 248 to 38. The East came out of the blocks with Tim Youngblood and Matt Horde and their outstanding core of receivers. And give a lot of credit, though, to that uh, East defense, too, Larry, because they were so active. Uh, Marvin Wright and Tim Crowley just didn't get an opportunity to throw the football today on the West side. The misleading uh, statistic, of course, is one that many times is meaningless is the time of possession. If you looked at that and that only, you'd see the West a big winner here this afternoon. They had the ball 28 minutes plus East nearly 20 minutes. That's not the way this game went this afternoon, scoring-wise. And the strange thing about it, it was a, a, a mistake that actually led to the West touchdown this afternoon. Sure, and you have to remember when you talk about the West in that time of possession, most of that was garnered in the second half. They came out with that outstanding run game going behind the Glowacki and McConnell on the front line. Yeah, they ate up clock. They moved the sticks for first downs, but then the turnover bugaboo hit them, and they weren't able to maintain possession enough to get it down and get it in the end zone. I think if that first drive would have been successful after they moved it, what, 50, 55 yards and would have gotten in, might have been a whole different contest. It was a complete changeup in offensive philosophy. Looked like it would work. Mistakes killed it in the end. Well, that just about does it for this afternoon. We hope you enjoyed the telecast of the 13th Annual Michigan State High School All-Star Game. I'd like to thank all of you folks who uh, helped put us this game together, and we'd like to thank you for joining us for the telecast. Now, for my partner, Michael Regai, I'm Larry Osterman, reminding you of today's final score. The East All-Stars 29, the West All-Stars 6. So long, everybody.